What's up, residents? Alistair here. Godzilla! Sorry if I scared any of you. I'm, I'm just really happy to hear that more MonsterVerse Godzilla is happening. This franchise is easily the most important set of films in my eyes. They're the kind of things that make me feel like a kid again. Some of my best memories have been made around Godzilla, but as far as we knew, Godzilla vs. Kong was the last of the MonsterVerse. But to hear that a live-action series is in production from Legendary, it's confirmed that the series will continue and peace is restored to the galaxy. But following the announcement, it seems a large percentage of the community is freaking out about a specific part of the news. But why? And is it valid? Well, let's dive into it. Welcome back. The title of the Godzilla series is currently unknown, but what we do know is it will be written by Chris Black, the writer of Invincible, Star Trek Enterprise, Desperate Housewives, and was even the producer of Mad Men. This balance of science fiction, action and drama hopefully means the Godzilla series will have the best of everything, with some of the best characters in the MonsterVerse that are captivating enough to want to spend a substantial amount of time with between the monster action. Chances are we're going to see a lot of humans in the show, so for them to be well written is a must. But what about the story? What should we expect? Well, the synopsis for the film goes as such. Following the thunderous battle between Godzilla and the Titans that leveled San Francisco and the shocking new reality that monsters are real, the Untitled series explores one family's journey to uncover its buried secrets and a legacy linking them to the secret organization known as Monarch. It's confirmed a few things. It takes place following the events of 2014, Monarch will play a big part in the series and will get some new characters that are connected in some way to the organization. This sounds perfect for a MonsterVerse series, as being part of Monarch means we can essentially follow the Titans firsthand, and since it's set after the events of 2014, we can feel the tension and horror firsthand as billions of civilians across the world just discovered that monsters are real and they'd be rightfully terrified. So hopefully we get to look into how this realization affects the everyday person. Perhaps we'd see protests, riots, paranoia, and mass exodus as people escape from the coast inland in fears of Godzilla making landfall. All making Godzilla's existence feel really real in a way that's not been seen for years. So sounds great, right? So what is it that's freaking people out? What has people angry about what should be an epic announcement? Well, along with the announcement, it was revealed that this show would be coming straight to Apple TV+. But what is TV+, well, it's a subscription service for Apple's own streaming platform that has a ton of exclusive shows like C, Invasion, Ted Lasso, The Morning Show, Steven Spielberg's Amazing Stories, and even films like The Tragedy of Macbeth, as well as many more. Every streaming service has their own golden child, the show that people flock to to subscribe in order to watch. Netflix has The Witcher and Stranger Things, Disney Plus has Star Wars, Amazon Prime has The Boys and will soon have The Lord of the Rings, HBO Max recently got Peacemaker, and Paramount Plus will soon have Halo. But what does Apple TV Plus have? The morning show? I mean, it's good, but it's not exactly something that's going to capture the imagination of the general audience. What about C, starring Jason Momoa? Also good, but being a new property means it's had a tough time finding an audience. It seems that Apple really wants in on that prime TV action, but it's had a tough time striking gold. Which brings us to Godzilla. The MonsterVerse has proved to be one of, if not the most successful series of monster films in the history of the genre, earning around $2 billion in revenue between only four films. And that's not even including revenue from toys and graphic novels. The series has proved there is a wide audience for monster flicks that are just waiting to consume new content. So when Legendary began discussions on making a live-action Godzilla series, they opened up the bid across all streaming networks to purchase the rights to home the series on their platforms. 
Which leads us to where we are today, with Apple buying the license to stream the upcoming Godzilla show exclusively to their platform, TV+. They clearly saw something that was worth having and paid a premium for it. The rest of the services like Netflix, Amazon, and HBO Max likely also made offers, but Apple's was too good to refuse, not only offering the most money to Legendary, but potentially even offering a multi-season deal, which, if that's the case, means we'll see more than one season of Godzilla goodness. So why are people freaking out? Well, understandably, people don't want to subscribe to another streaming service, with dozens of services already available, that small initial cost builds up over time and then multiplies as you have to pay each month. Maybe I'm just a boomer, but I personally prefer to own the things I bought, so I hope they bring the series to Blu-ray at some point. I completely understand and sympathize with the people that can't afford to have multiple streaming services, and having Godzilla limited to the one you don't have can be extremely frustrating. It's no surprise that Apple TV Plus is one of the lowest subscribed streaming services, a result of the show's not really making an impact for attracting the general audience. It doesn't have its Stranger Things, Witcher, or Mandalorian. But this is something that Apple hopes to change. But are there any benefits to Godzilla being on Apple TV Plus? Well, surprisingly, Apple's service is one of the most cost effective subscriptions out there costing you just $5 a month. So even though it's frustrating that you have to subscribe to another service, it's a relatively small price to pay for more MonsterVerse goodness, especially when you compare it to platforms like HBO Max that cost $15 a month. Also, a common misconception is that you need an Apple product to watch TV+, which just isn't the case. The service is a worldwide platform. You can, of course, watch it on iOS and macOS, but you can even watch it on consoles like PS5 or Xbox, as well as your average PC, and can even watch it on Android phones using your browser. It's by far one of the most accessible streaming services available. Some platforms like HBO Max, Paramount Plus, and Hulu aren't even available in all countries, like the UK, for example, meaning if the show was to premiere on those services, millions of people, including me, would have had no official way of watching it, which would have been tragic. So whilst it's frustrating to have to subscribe to a new service, the pros easily outweigh the cons in my eyes. Apple is home to programs that range from pretty good to excellent, so even though there's not much that screams out as appealing to me, there really isn't anything terrible on the service. Apple has a tight quality control system, which means that the Godzilla series will at least be good and could even be fantastic. Apple also provides their shows with huge budgets, one example being C, which is said to have a whopping $15 million budget per episode. That's even more than Stranger Things. And with an eight-episode season, C has a total budget of $120 million, comparable to even some Hollywood blockbusters, more than enough to showcase some badass monster action. It's also worth noting that Warner Bros. likely soured their relationship with Legendary since they, without warning, put all of Legendary's upcoming film lineup for 2021 on HBO Max the same day as theaters, which no doubtedly had an impact on their box office earnings. So it comes to no surprise that Legendary may not want to work with Warner Bros. right now until their relationship has been mended, which might not even happen for a few years. Overall, I understand people's frustrations and anger. Releasing a beloved franchise on one platform practically no one is subscribed to is just inconvenient for a lot of people. But thanks to TV Plus's worldwide reach, ease of access, and cost-effectiveness, it hopefully means we're in for a great exploration of the MonsterVerse that millions of fans can enjoy. Call me a fanboy for being excited if you want, but I'd plunge my hand into a used toilet filled with dirty needles just for a glimpse of anything new that's Godzilla-related. Hopefully, I've quelled some of your fears about Godzilla's show being on Apple TV+. I know a lot of people in the comments section were worried that they wouldn't be able to watch it since they didn't have an iPhone or an iMac, but don't worry, the service is available practically everywhere. Are you planning on subscribing to Apple TV Plus to watch the continuation of the MonsterVerse, or are you going to wait until it eventually comes out on Blu-ray? Let us know in the comment section down below. 
If you like this insight into why people are freaking out about the Godzilla series, then leave a like because it helps this video reach even more fans. Don't forget to subscribe and stomp the notification button to become a resident of Dangerville today. I've been Alistair, and we'll see you residents in the next one.